أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد This is Surah Al-Ikhlas It's talking about sincerity of faith That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one and only Qul huwa Allahu ahad Allah is one He is Allah the one Allahu samad That Allah is the eternal Bisot of Here Bisot of here is referring to The attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That is a samad That is he is someone that We all seek our sustenance from But he does not seek any help or sustenance from anyone. So that's Allah was summoned. The one that we sought for things and he's eternal. And Lam Yalid Walam Yulad. He begets not nor was he begotten. Allah does not have a son or Allah does not give birth or does not beget. And he was not begotten or he was not born. Walam Yakullahu Kufu and Ahad. And that there's nothing comparable to he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we, we look at the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and some of the narrations, how this surah came about, or how this revelation came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We learn from the traditions that there was a time that the people of the book, or people of other faiths, came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the masjid. He was in the mosque, and they came to him to ask him about God, because they heard that he was the new prophet in town. Because they had the previous scriptures, you know, the Jewish scripture and the Injil, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ask him regarding God. Because they wanted to confirm if indeed he was the prophet that their scriptures were telling, was, uh, were telling them about him. So they wanted to find out if indeed he was the prophet that their scriptures were telling them about. You know, when you look at the Jewish scripture in Deut, um, chapter 18, verse 15, it talks about um, Moses telling his people that there will be a prophet to come from their brethren or their cousins who are the Arabs later on in the future. And then we also learn from the Angel or the Gospel of Jesus where it is stated in the Gospel of John chapter 14 in verse 16 where we heard and learn that jesus also spoke to his people and told them that there is going to be a prophet to come after him and he will be the comforter well in some other jurisprudence or in some other studies some say that the comforter there is referring to the holy spirit but when we also study that at the time the, at the time jesus christ was telling his people that the comforter will be coming and if indeed it was the Holy Spirit that Jesus was referring to, let's not forget that the Holy Spirit was there even before Jesus Christ was born. We remember that at the time Jesus Christ was uh, to be baptized, the Holy Spirit was there, and even at the time of the birth of John the Baptist. So that's one thing that we can also look at, that the comforter here referred to in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 16, it's not necessarily referring to the Holy Spirit, but the Comforter here refers to no other person than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Well, we, we could have different views to this, but what I would encourage is that let's research and understand the genesis of all this. Because in the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we learn that the people of the book or the previous Faithful people came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in his mocks to ask him about God, who is God. And that's where the surah came, or this chapter of Al-Quran, Surah Al-Ikhlas. Then, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he used not to speak of his own accord. When they asked him the question, he kept quiet until the revelation came. And it said, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, that he should see, see Allah is one. Or he should say he is Allah because they asked him about God, who is God? And he said, Kul hu Allahu ahad. He has been given the message. So he said, Kul hu Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah, the one. 
because that's the message, that's how it came to him. So he was being commanded to tell them that he should say he is Allah, the one. Allah who summit, he is the eternal sustainer to all of us, meaning he takes care of our sustenance, or we all seek sustenance from him. And lam yalid wa lam yulad, that he begets not, nor was he begotten. You see, Allah was very critical about this, because these people that were asking the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the question, we understand that some of them perhaps would have considered the previous uh, messenger or prophet, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, that is Jesus Christ, or Jesus the Messiah. We call him the Masihi, means the Messiah. Some considered him as a son of God. So at this point, when they were asking the question, Allah decided to be specific, that he begets not, nor was he begotten, that he does not give birth to a child, nor does he have a child or a son, just to be clear to them that Allah does not have a son, and he, Allah, is not one that was born. And there's nothing comparable to him. That's that you cannot use anything in this world in our humanly understanding to compare to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see Allah has a son, using the nature of human being, man, to compare to Allah, Allah says that he, you cannot use anything to compare him. Anything, any sort of thing you perceive of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's not the one. Any image that you have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's not the one. Allah is nothing comparable to anything in this world. So that was a message that was so specific so that we could get it clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no son or he did not give birth to a child. Now we understand that in other scriptures perhaps we could hear that um, one person was re referred to as the begotten son of God. And let's look at the understanding of begotten. When we say begotten, if you look at English language, to beget something, it means there should be some sort of sexual relationship or there should be some sort of consummation. We understand that consummation is what we refer to when two people get married and they meet. We call that they've consummated the marriage. So when there's no sexual relation or intercourse, there's no marriage or the marriage has not been consummated. So we cannot use the word beget and attribute it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will be a form of blasphemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above that. We cannot say Allah begot a son. I think that in some other uh, understanding the scriptures, we, under we learn that the closest, to, the closest thing to saying that he is the son of God was that there was a statement where he said, I and my father are one. We learn that from other scriptures, but if you look at Islamic teaching, when we say some people are one, or we are one, it means that we are one in terms of our mission or in terms of our belief. For instance, myself and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are one. It means that I follow the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I believe in whatever the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam believed in. So we are brothers in Islam. So in as much as we are one, it means that we are brethren in terms of belief. So the statement that I and my father are one in other scriptures is a figure of speech referring to the fact that Jesus Christ and God are one in terms of their message to mankind because God sent Jesus Christ or the Messiah to preach the message to mankind. Well, some others will say that I am a father are one simply means that he's the son of the father. And again, let's come to the fact that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born by a woman, a human. And you can't say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, because he was born by a woman and without a father, it means that his father is God. Yes, if his father is God, it would also be from the understanding that God is the one that takes care of him. As a figure of speech, God is the one that took care of his sustenance as he was growing up. So if he referred to God as his father, as a figure of speech, it made sense. For instance, if you were born and your father perhaps died before you were born, if your uncle brought you up, you will refer to your uncle as your father. Again, we understand from the teachings of Al-Quran that the father referred to, in the case of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, or Abraham, was not necessarily his biological father. It was his uncle. So father here as a figure of speech, 
it's understandable because if Jesus said, I and my father are one, it means that his father is the one that takes care of him. He is responsible for his sustenance and, he, and together they are one in terms of their mission to the whole of mankind. I think um, with this simple or brief explanation, let's try to understand that the statement that I am a father are one does not necessarily mean that Jesus is the son of God. And sometimes we probably go to the extreme and say that he's the begotten son just to prove the fact that, or to try to claim the fact that he indeed is the son of God. The son of God here is a figure of speech and even in some statements, we learn that we are all children of God. When we say we are all children of God, it does not necessarily mean that we are begotten by God himself. You see, it's not, it's, not, it's not right. It is blasphemy to say that God has begotten a creature. God creates, and he cannot be a creature. Inshallah, I hope we understand this, and then we pick some lessons from this. Another thing that we want to look at is the case where Jesus is perhaps considered as a son of God and even further referred to as God. You know, nowadays it's not just said that Jesus is the son of God, but he's referred to as God and that we should believe in Jesus Christ for when we believe in him would attain salvation. I think that we should go back to the teachings of Jesus Christ, which is the angel, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you look at the Gospel of Jesus Christ and not the Gospel of John or the Gospel of Paul or the Gospel of others, just, just look at the Gospel of Jesus Christ from the Islamic perspective. The Gospel of Jesus Christ does not mention that Jesus himself said he was God or where he said we should worship him because we believe that such an attribute should be something of great essence that if indeed we're supposed to worship Jesus Christ, there should have been a case where he himself had said, I am God, or where he said we should worship him and to be clear to all of us. If you look at his studies, if you look at the scriptures, we cannot find such evidence that Jesus himself said, I am God, or where he says worship him. The statement should be unambiguous because if the statement is ambiguous, then we can have some issues, like the case of I am a father are one. You know, it's an ambiguous statement. So, and we've already clarified with regards to that. So, from our studies, we don't find it anywhere where Jesus himself said, I am God, or where he says, worship me. We know that in our Quran, Allah SWT made it clear that he is Allah and he created us. And he has asked us to save him or to worship him. Remember we mentioned in our Quran, Surah Zariyat, where Allah SWT mentioned, A'uzu billahi mina shaitan rajim, wa ma khalaqtu jinna wal insa illa li abdun that I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me or to save me. Here, this is a statement that has been said by Allah SWT in Al-Quran, and this statement is unambiguous. You cannot argue with this statement. So we don't have such a statement by Jesus Christ himself or Jesus the Messiah himself stating that he is God or he is the begotten son of God and that we should worship him. Um, we are students of knowledge and we would like to research into this and understand more of this. Remember that some of us probably have debated in other cases, you know, in debate, before you make sense or before you can win a debate, you need to present your case, present the evidence and facts in order to win a debate. The same way when we look at the law court, when you want to win a case in court, you have to pre present your case, present your evidence and have the facts before you can win the case. So let's assume we are all jurors to a case of this sort. Let's say we are a jury. You know, the jury in the law court are people selected, responsible people of high standing in society or honorable standing in society who will not be um, biased or partial in terms of their reasoning and judgment. So let's look at the evidences, let's look at the presentation, and also do our own research into this. Inshallah, the will is still with us. Allah SWT mentions in Al Quran, in Surah Al Insan, that He has given us the gifts of hearing and sight. And whether we are grateful to He, Allah SWT, or not, the will is with us. So everything relies on our will. 
if you want to um, consider this or not, inshallah.